Tonight, we would like to hear how we could make the page better. Uh, please no negativity if you have some negative, I mean, bad negativity stuff. You want to send us in a private message, that's fine. Uh, this is a very public forum. We try not to hurt anyone's feelings or talk about anyone past or present in a negative light. Uh, please keep in mind this page is your page. The members who read it, participate in it, and share as well as tell their neighbors and friends it all becomes their page. I am going to turn it over to Kevin, and he's going to uh, probably MC this as to who talks when and how. At the end, I'd like to come back on. I want to talk about um, the town hall display, the Boston Public, the Boston Post Cane, and a GoFundMe that we're talking about for the cemetery. So, Kevin, if you would, please. And like I said, one more time, if you guys can keep it all brief. We appreciate it and we appreciate all our members. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. Um, so we didn't have everybody show up tonight that we thought might show up, but we've had, but um, we're grateful that you guys showed up. And so I have to change what I was going to say a little bit. Um, so I'm just going to be, I'm going to be real brief here, but I just want to say that like, there's all these lessons to be learned in York history group is like an amazing teacher. And, and I'm so grateful and for everybody and all the participation. And I'm going to give a little story. And I, but first, I guess I'd like to say hi to everybody because I usually would say hi. And uh, but with the mics turned off, I know you can't say hi, hi back. Sorry about that. Um, you know, uh, so I'm going to just when I first met James, I think it was James Kansas, our town historian. I think it was 2014. And uh, and 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 somebody said, "Oh, you should go meet James." And I thought, "Oh, you know, who's James?" And, um, so I just thought that I was pretty knowledgeable about York history back then. And, um, you know, just this week I have learned that I am like very small and minuscule and because in regards to all of the academic work that James has done, and I didn't even realize it, um, until I was talking to Danny Bettino the other day and, uh, and James is like a true academic treasure, uh, amongst us. And. One of the papers that he has recently shared with everybody, thanks to Danny, is this one. Um, I don't know if you can see the title of that. It's a, it's a mouthful, James. Um, and I'll just read it to you. It's Some Unexplored Relationships of Essex County Witchcraft, the Indian Wars of 1675 and 1689. And this is really a seminal paper um, about how the York influenced the witch trials in Salem. And James has revised this, I understand, uh, one time before, and now he has an entire a new version of it that we're going to look forward to reading um, at some point soon. Um, and I will say that, James, this is really, um, I have only gotten three quarters of the way through this one. And I, it, it, it's, 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 for me, it's a difficult to put it all together and to put it all into place. But James lays everything out really clearly, and it's, it's just, it's invaluable. So thank you, James. And so I, I love books and I always like to do a little book thing on here. And my recent book that I just ordered and I waited eagerly in the mail for it to come and it came and it is uh, published by the Maine Genealogist. And again, you just never know who's doing what and what you're gonna find. And I'm gonna just uh, turn Elaine Wood's microphone on here. Um, ask, ask to unmute. And Elaine, so I opened up this book, The Main Genealogist, and I found this article by none other than you on Henry Simpson. And it was something that you wrote in 20, 2002. And it just so happened at the same time, I was trying to figure out this Simpson dilemma in my own family tree. And I'm not sure I'm completely clear about it now, but um, Elaine has written a two page article in here that really discusses the two Henry Simpsons that were living simultaneously in York and have confused a lot of people. And I might actually be more confused about it now, but um, I'm, I'm gonna make a phone call to you and try to get our line straightened out. And I think that, is this from Jeremiah Freeman to Young? Um, no, it's a different line, okay. So, um, so I just want people to know that um, there are historians amongst us um, and you never know where you're going to find this stuff. And it's amazing that someone can just oversee something like, you know, I've known 
And Elaine has also written, uh, uh, she proved something in the main families of 1790s, I think it is, on um, John Freeman's wife, uh, Lydia Weber. Um, and so she's, she's, you know, Elaine's an author that um, we have a lot of respect for. So um, thank you, Elaine. Um, yeah, so I don't have anything else to say currently. Um, but I do have uh, something I'm going to follow up with Danny on in a little bit. But if anybody would, else would like to make a comment or a contribution right now, just let me know and I will unmute you. Should they raise their hand? Yeah, please raise your hand. Did I see it? You got to put, your, if you can see your hand, then if in the, in your video, was that you, Laurel? Okay. Everybody for lots of words. No, I think Laura, I'm trying to unmute Laurel currently. Oh, I can unmute. It wasn't me, but uh, yeah. Okay, I just uh, I wanted to say I love the all the graveyard visits that the, everybody's been doing. It's really fantastic, and um, it would be great if we could kind of put together what we learn about those people, maybe into like a big. I'm sure they're already collecting it, but into a big document so that people in town know all the numbers. And whatever history we can find out of the people who are buried there would be great. Thank you. Um, I guess if you have a, a still image, we're not, oh, I see a hand up over here by Alan. From Al Lifgren, um, asked to be mute. Yeah, I you see. There? You yeah, there? Alan? You, you can hear me now. I see the blockage yeah. has gone off. Yeah. Lauren raises a point that I wanted to raise that Kevin and I have talked a lot about uh, what the group is doing. Uh, and I find that Facebook is a great tool to use for a snapshot in time, but invariably, whenever anyone posts a picture or a sentence or whatever, everybody chimes in. And we learn that we have this expansive body of information uh, spread across the group that actually never gets summarized beyond Facebook and the comments. And much of the work is quite scholarly. Uh, and then a day or two or three passes and we've moved on to a new topic and uh, it's basically lost to the vapors. People don't have a tendency to do a search on Facebook and we often find that people post two or three different postings all on the same topic so that there's there's no real summary. I could use an example of if we if we query Facebook for goldenrod, There'll be hundreds and hundreds of pictures, but there'll be no common thread between any of them. And uh, I think I'd like to see us take the next step to actually be able to assemble the data in some scholarly way so that we can build on these topics as the knowledge flows in. Uh, I also said to Kevin and Katie Eaton and some of the others that know me that some of our members that have been using Facebook for years to post their family data or their personal data, or whatever, have found that the data that they've been keeping on Facebook has actually timed out that two or three or five years may pass and the data is gone and it's lost forever. Now, in some cases, uh, Facebook, because they back up their data, can recreate it. But the fact of the matter is, I and some of our others have personal knowledge of, of data that's been lost forever and that the people that provided the data originally are now deceased and it will never be recreated. So I think that that shows the real limitation of Facebook, uh, especially in terms of what we're trying to do. Uh, I wanna build on this topic, but I'd like to hear what other members might have to say about my thoughts on this. I'd like to speak to that. Um, my job in this group is to save the material. And so I have been, um, I save the pictures, but
but I also open a Word document and I save the conversations that are pertinent to those pictures. If they, I mean, if somebody just says, oh, that's beautiful, I'm not putting it in. But if somebody says something like, well, that was my grandmother's such and such, and there's a history in there and it's relevant, I have saved it to a Word document and saved it in a file along with the photograph. So hopefully my system will work and these things will stay. Well, you're, you're a perfect example. You and I have never met, but people have spoken well of you, but they say, you know, Elaine has two or three boxes of stuff in her basement and she's got this and she's got that. Uh, and I can say Alan Liffergren has at least a box in his basement too. Uh, and I have a child that's not all that interested. So when I die, the box will probably go to the dumpster. I don't know what's going to happen with your data. Uh, and then I look at Kevin McKinney. He posted the other day that he's got dozens and hundreds of postcards uh, of which he's been putting pictures out there. I think that's great. But the issue is what's going to be the permanent repository of the of the hundreds of postcards? Uh, I've tried to get a sense as to whether the old York Historical Society would do its job uh, and hold data for the benefit of mankind, uh, and they don't seem interested. Uh, I've spoken to Robert Waldman, for example, the former librarian, about the role of the library, and uh, and uh, he talks about a lot of the things that he'd tried to start, which never came to fruition again with the old York Historical Society. Uh, we see that the town clerk, because she has a personal interest and because she has Jane Kensis, uh, she's taken an interest in, in being a repository for data. Uh, we see that the new librarian, who is described to me as actually more of an archivist than she is librarian, uh, seems to have an interest in this too. Well, my real concern is having all the data we have uh, amongst us digitally available. That doesn't mean you have to have to give it up, but if we could scan it or whatever, uh, we'd have it. Uh, and I just think that that you know, I look around, there's a lot of gray hair here, except for Katie Eaton uh, on the pictures here. I guess Danny Patino too, but uh, but the long and the short of it is, you know, we're all going to fade away. And I just, I know, I wonder what's going to happen to all this stuff. Uh, and I think it's great what you're doing, Elaine. But, you know, the thing is, is that readily researchable? Is it original documentation? Is it the most uh, effective way to keep the data? And I submit that it's great, but it's not the best way to do it. Uh, people have seen how I keep my files. Uh, and I've got everything digitized and into folders uh, and readily searchable and the like. And I'd like to see us move toward that. Kevin and I've talked about it. He has the same frustration that I have. Uh, but I just think that what we're doing now is not going to live and, and stand the test of time. Yeah, well, I can tell you that ours is being saved on a flash drive, uh, on a on a hard drive, yeah. and it's also being saved in the cloud. Yeah, I'd heard that too, yeah, about it. So if I wanted to access it, what would I do? Send you a message and say, can I see what you've got? Or do I need to be specific as to topic, time, et cetera, et cetera? You could say, I would like to have all the material on the goldenrod. Yeah. I can send it to you. Yeah. I mean, you, I have asked you for some stuff about the Brixham Grange and Second Congregational Church, and you were great. Uh, uh, but of course, one question of mine led to a question from you, led to a question from me. So we finally got where we needed to be. But I just think that that one digital repository uh, would be great. Now, Kevin had said that the old York Historical Society uses a, a, a pro, uh, an archiving program that seems to be uh, the national standard, uh, I'd like to see us move towards something like that. Uh, I'd be willing to pay for the software. It's only seven or $800. But the issue is, are we, or is anybody willing to commit to having their data 
uh, entered into a, a centralized repository. And I'm not sure that we are. I mean, I am. Mine's ready to go, what I've got. But I think that that you know we need to make some sort of transition. Otherwise, Facebook will close and we'll all die and the basements will flood and it'll be it'll be gone. You forgot yeah, fire and brimstone. Well, fire and brimstone too. But. Uh, let, let me can I interject? Um, so yeah, so Alan knows that we are working on a meeting with uh, Michelle and at the library and Lynn. Uh, the town clerk, and we will be discussing these things. And um, so I think it's it's like we're volunteers and we're really great at consuming and, and you know, creating content. But when it comes to saving it, and to your point, Alan, that we have sort of a an overall deficiency there. How do we organize it all and have it in one central place? And um, so if anybody would like to be involved in this process, um, I think I reached out to the library and the town clerk first, um, and I was away for a while. And I know that we're going to have a. They both agreed to a meeting, and they're both bringing their IT people, and uh, also Devin at the library. The IT person has been great, and he's also been forthcoming. He, they he's already looked into things like the main memory network and digital main. Um, so we need to get those things out on the table, and we need to see who can do what. And like you said, Alan. Who would have a, who would buy, who would own the server? Would it be on the town server? Would it be on the library server? Um, and then we need to see if that's even a possibility. And if it's not, then like whenever we post anything, maybe it will come down to just having a hashtag or something that would be that we would. I don't know. It's 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 a it's a it's a big issue. Uh, and so if we secondarily, we could maybe have like on York mainhistory.org website on your website, Alan, and other websites, we could have a little place that had um, click here for a history tree or something. And then um, all of these individual links could fly out and people could have access to each one. Um, I, and I think that like um, the town clerk's page is kind of arduous to get to. I go there quite often and James is, you know, updating it con continuously and it's, and it's amazing. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this is such a treasure for the town. But it's still hard to get to. So if, you know, I'm just talking, I'm thinking out loud right now, but if we had like a link tree or something like that and everybody could have met it into their, into their spaces or their, where. Well, if, if I may, I spoke to James about this a while back. We've, we've met once, you know, people don't understand what, what James is actually providing us, but James is providing Excel spreadsheets uh, of a location of data. There's some data there, but he's really, it's a map to where the data is. Well, so first you've got to go to what James has done. You've got to see what James has described to data to be. And then you've got to go find the book and go to the book to look at the data itself. Uh, yeah. And I think that that's better. That's wonderful what we've done. But the point is the source data should be digitally available. Uh, and you know, ultimately, maybe maybe the town clerk's books would be scanned uh, as searchable PDFs. But you know that that's something that is the logical extension of this. Mm -hmm. I also submit, and I said this to James, he's using Microsoft Excel. Well, not everybody in the world understands Microsoft Excel, and not everybody in the world has access to Microsoft Excel to look at the data. And most people don't realize you can use. Uh, Google Docs to look at Microsoft Excel data. So, you know, it, Katie and I were talking about this on Saturday. She can access Daniel or James's stuff at work, but not at home or vice versa, whatever I meant, Katie. Uh, and I think that that's what we see. Uh, but the point is, that's the perfect example that the, 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 the documents in the town clerk's office should be digitized. Uh, just like all of our records should be digitized. So okay. I, I, I know I'm beating this to death, but yeah. it's I think, really I important think, to me. I, I think Carol, Carol, did you have a question? Did you want to add to this? Wait a minute, sorry, I'm unmuting you. Um, I think everybody's gonna just be unmuted here in a minute. Uh, you're still muted. Do you have a button that says unmute? Oh, there you are. Uh I only wanted to say there should be quite a bit of information 
now at Old York's new building on the Grange because my grandparents met there. Valerie and Ethel, my mother, they all went there. Beulah Hanscom was the pianist there. But I, there's quite, there should be quite a oh, bit I know of that. information. Yeah, I know that. Uh, you know, that's about one particular topic that's of relative recent history. I mean, in theory, the Grange plus or minus 1898. But what about all the stuff before that? And, you know, Laurel has a special interest in it. Uh, I'm the guy that restored the grain, so I have a special interest in it. But that's only one small thing. Uh, right. You know, uh, you know, I've digitized some of the records. I don't know if I can uh, share my screen, for example. Uh, let me just find it here. Uh, <clears throat> can everybody see this screen? Yes. yes. This is the website I've been developing as uh, an alternative to the current uh, York Maine History Group Society. But for example, uh, everybody uses this book entitled The York Vital Records of Maine Prior to 1892. Does this look familiar to a lot of you? This is all the cemeteries in York with who's buried there. Anyhow, to make a long story short, I took the paper copy that Katie Eden owned and digitized it myself and made it into a searchable PDF so that uh, she and I and Nate Lozier, maybe Kevin Freeman, I don't know, you know, we're using this when we go to grave sites. We don't need the book anymore. We've got the digital record. I can search on anything that's contained within this. Uh, so so problem solved uh, in well, terms yeah. of... Alan, yeah. let me let me just say too that um it it so for those who know it's like James' work for those who know about it but then um there's a lot of people that aren't going to know about that. Well, I haven't put it out there because it's on my server, and I was hoping we'd be further along. Uh, I think you, I think it's downloadable. You sent it to me, and I think I downloaded it onto my uh, computer. Yeah, you might have it, but you know, Katie uses it on her phone. They right, but I think I think that the, yeah. uh, 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 an, uh, another aspect of this is, is that even if we get it out there, people still are gonna. It's like I'm, like I said, I'm discovering things about Elaine that I didn't know, um, about James, and it's just we can't really comprehend all of the things that are possible for us to, um, have access to. It's it's like really, um, there's a lot of stuff. Yeah, and you know, I've been taking pictures of. Uh... You know, every every grave site we've been to, I've cataloged them all. Uh, I've used the the burial data. Uh, I could share that. Too. Well, I have to bring it up again. Uh, but, you know, all the visits we've had, you know, we've, we've made the records available amongst ourselves digitally. I mean, Katie Eaton it takes hundreds of pictures and she's got them all cataloged on her Google Drive. But that, but they're not available to me unless she gives them to me. So, anyhow, I don't want to go too far with this, but I'm, as you know, Kevin, I'm very interested in pursuing the permanent solution. <clears throat> yeah, and we're we're gonna we're gonna get there, Al. We're gonna we're gonna take a giant step here. Um, so be patient. Yeah, I'd be I'd be interested in being part of those meetings too. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Any other hands? Terry, good to see you, Terry. I have one. I have one idea of a campaign I thought that we could do. Um, the other day, I've been doing research on Highland Farm, and I happened to find out that my next door neighbor was a Junkins, and it turns out that her grandfather adopted the name Junkins, but he was really from Russia. To another story. But her cousin was there and talking about how they had gone to Highland Farm as kids and gone in the bowling alley and they'd gone to the dance room where there was like a like a sky lit up on the ceiling, like nighttime sky on the ceiling. And so I think it would be kind of cool to just do a campaign where like go talk to your elderly neighbor, like like reach out 
and talk to the people in your neighborhood that you know and see what kind of memories they have um, and capture that while we can. So I think there are probably a lot of people out there who have, I mean, you kind of think of your grandparents or whatever, but you don't necessarily think of your neighbors or other people who've lived in the area for a long time. So that might be kind of a cool thing to do. Yeah, you know, uh, all of those people that used to be the old people in my neighborhood, I have become the old person. So <laughs> <You know. laughs> Terry, Terry, please, please go ahead. Yeah, so I'm I'm the outsider, but uh, my family originally was from York and I, I've met uh, several of you, but I didn't know anything about York, Maine until about four months ago. And it was all because of digital searches I did, online searches. I live in I live about 40 miles north of Detroit. And um, so I've got a family story. I've got a mother that came from Canada and a father that came from Louisiana. And uh, I have a, they were adopted. And so I did, starting about 20 years ago, I did a real big family tree search. And that led to, you know, a lot of travels. But um, I also do um, conservation work. And so I was, I was, so I know I've, I've shared this, this story and it, it's kind of crazy, but uh, I was doing some uh, conservation work and I needed some practice documents um, because of the document, the documents were valuable and I needed a practice on a lesser document. So I went online and through a couple of different sources. And then when Kevin said, uh, have you looked at eBay? I, I even found them on eBay. But um, I found these old documents and I started reading them and transcribing them. And I realized that, the, and they're from York, Maine, and there were deeds and different documents. But I realized that my families were in these documents. And so that led me to, to like finding the York uh, page, the town hall, seeing Danny in videos, Kevin in videos, and... I, I got more interested, but I found that Excel spreadsheet from James and realized that, holy cow, like half those names on that spreadsheet, I, I descend from them. So um, the project just turned into a like a crazy family tree uh, project. And then I came to York. I walk into the historical uh, building and there's Danny, like, and I know him by name and he's like freaking out because like, I'm like, how does he know my name? And so, but I've done a lot of family tree work across the country and I've never found a town that loves its history like York and that is, has so much going for it and has so much information. And look at this, we're six o'clock on a Sunday, there's 13 people talking about something that happened 400, 300 years ago, you know, in your backyard. And it, it's a, I love York. I love York, Maine. Uh, I, I wish I wasn't, uh, you know, 12 hours away. Um, but it, everything that we're doing digitally and what James is doing, and I had the opportunity to meet with James and I'll finish the story by saying that I, I never understood how my, my mother's family got to Canada and how my dad's family got to Louisiana. So, and, and speaking with James, you know, and, and he's, he's incredible with the names. I actually found out that my mother's family in New York actually put my dad's family, which were Acadians, put them on the boat and, and, sail them to to louisiana so literally my one side of my family started you know both both of them started in in the york area and one actually exiled the other and then my mother and father came together you know 300 years later so somewhere there's a book in there but um i have digitized everything that i've i've collected and that is available uh, for the group and uh, i'd be happy to to share any of that, but having a digital, having a digital and online and searchable, I would not have found this group or York, Maine, 
or the fact that, or even learn without that silly Excel spreadsheet, I would not have known that I was related to everyone at in York, Maine. So I'm really, I'm really glad for this group. Thank yeah, you. So, so, so with that said, Alan, we are actually doing pretty good, huh? We are really doing good. <laughs> I, I can go to some towns and they go, you want to go back when? You want to go back 40 years? No, I want to go back 100 years. Oh, no, we don't have anything. Yeah, so it's it, we're doing a great thing. So that's all I got. Thank you very much. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and 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 Terry, it's been a pleasure uh, getting to know you too. I just want to say that. Yeah, no, it's it, it, you'll see more of me. <laughs> Good. Oh, you know, Terry, while you're we've got you here, I have fantasized that you would do a little video on conserv conserving deeds and maybe share it with us sometimes. You know, the e even the rudimentary aspect of that because yeah. I have a lot. I have a pile of deeds, and they're all, you know, in various states of disrepair. And I'm like, oh, Terry would be able to show us this whole thing. I don't know if you guys can see this, but what I've done is I've taken it actually a step further. Or did it go out of blue? Oh, it doesn't want to. Oh, there you go. There you go. Right there. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I've, I've done uh, like a title page. And then I also have, it must be a setting in Zoom, but I have the transcription on one side. Sorry, guys. Because the lighting. Yeah. It must be a setting. Sorry, but yes, you're right. It, I'll uh, I'll have to put together something. I'd be happy to do that. That would be great. Um, and and it, for those of us who have had the benefit of seeing his documents, they're just pristine. They're like they they creases are folded really nicely. They're they're crisp and white, and it's, and for old documents, they just look amazing. And you were able to enhance the ink on some of them, right, Jerry? Some of, some of them, yeah, yeah. Uh, and Danny, I'm waiting for your paper to come out on the. I learned from Danny about the fingerprint seals and whatever that, what, when are you going to publish or get that article out? Cause um, I have all these, you know, all of these documents that have my grandparents, you know, fingerprints on them. I, I, I'd love to learn more. Have you scanned them all? They're all scanned. Yep. <clears throat> Kevin, can we, can we share uh, email addresses through Kevin? And uh, I actually have them all online, so I could definitely share a. Uh, I could share a link. Sure, you could just yeah. put it in the message. And... I can put it in the message. Yeah, let me let me try that. Danny, are you unmuted? Yes. Hello. <laughs> yes, I am uh, working on that uh, seal project now. Um, I've got about probably a, a thousand seals. I eighteen hundred eighteen eighty is where I stopped roughly, and these are mostly from um, mass towns, you know, from Boston and the surrounding area. But I, I've got some some main seals. I've got seals from York, Kittery. Um, I'll have to check maybe maybe a few others, but there's certainly more main seals out there. But what I, I want to do is create. I think you probably have have some I could uh, add, Terry. Um, yeah, I actually picked up yeah. a document this week with Jeremiah Moulton, uh, yeah. senior and junior, and Daniel. Uh, I think all oh. of the document. Daniel Moulton, excellent. So yes, that was, that was kind of rare to rare to pick up. Oh, great! Yeah, I've I, I've never seen their 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 seals, and those are those are big York people. <laughs> um, I, I'm working on creating a um, digital database of 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 all the seals I can I can I can find. And once I have this finished, it will be it will be you know uh, will make it make it public and hopefully published. I'll be publishing articles on this on this topic too. So this is uh, you know finishing up my uh, you know PhD. So this is something that is being worked on slowly, but I I think it will it will be it will be out um, probably within a, a couple couple years. Yeah. I do want to do find more uh, York seals, definitely. You know, um, there are so many diverse interests within the York history realm. 
Um, mm-hmm. Just listening to you guys, you know, what all of us individually sort of have a different forte. We have a different specialized interest in everything. So having this dialogue is really nice because it kind of pulls me over to, to where you I get to be inspired by what you're doing. And um, so it's it's just like a it's, it's great. I'm just I'm just excited about it. Kevin, uh, can I add something here or say something? Of course. Um, maybe the other viewers, which might be 300 or 130, would like to know the document that Terry found that's uh, 17. Yeah. Do, does anybody want to explain that, Danny, or the significance of that, the 1707 pupil reader or whatever it is? Because, uh, I mean, we have viewers that don't know uh, Terry grew up in Michigan that uh, he's buying records online their documents online that apply to our town 300 something years ago that nobody else has so if somebody would expand on that please Danny can we unmute Danny yeah he's muted again oh how did that happen oh Danny muted himself okay Danny, you unmuted? Yes, thank you. Yes. <laughs> um, yes, I mean, Terry probably knows this document better than than I do, but um, uh, you know, it's it's very rare, I just to speak in general terms, to see such an, an, an early document, uh, 1707. Um, it has um, the first uh, teacher in uh, York, um, um, Freeman, right? uh is he um i think he's do you are you is he like your your great 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 grandfather or great uncle or yeah he's my seventh um, great grandfather yeah oh seventh great grandfather yeah nathaniel yep. freeman yeah nathaniel freeman so he's here in the in this document and you know on the history of teaching in york i think it's a pretty critical document he teaches until about 17 teens and then Joseph Joseph Moody, who I've studied, you know, um, the son of the Reverend Samuel Moody takes over, and then Freeman dies in the early 1720s. And Joseph Moody actually talks about him being sick for some time and then dying in his in his in his diary and, that he keeps. And, and Danny, not to interrupt you, but I am I yeah. have to. Um, yeah. So it's interesting that my seventh great grandfather would have been Joseph Moody's teacher, presumably. That just yes, blows me away. Yeah. Right, so we can forge these links through the family history and through these documents that we find, which is uh, pretty pretty cool. Uh, but we should um, we shouldn't really blame Nathaniel for what. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yes, James, well, on, James wants to James, say. James, yes. Sorry, I, I, I interrupted you, Danny. Keep going. Oh no! Well, I think I've, I've, you know, I, I, I haven't studied this this uh, document super closely, so I think I've said. Uh, everything that that I can say on it, I think James uh, studied has studied uh, the document, so maybe he has something well, to James say. And Terry, of course, up. knows it too. Yes. Okay, James has his hand up. Here we go. Um, you know what was interesting too? I'm unmuting James. Um, is the the complexity of the mathematics in those uh, mm. documents? I was kind of surprised. There was, some, there was some trigonometry going on there. James is frozen now. There you there, James? Uh, yeah, can you hear me? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Welcome. Well, I've been listening very carefully to what's been said. And the way I see it is you're 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 working through, you know, a, a series of phases to get to a better place than you've been before. And that's a very positive mm. thing. Um, mm. He froze. Oh, he's, he's frozen. You know, I, I think that you know what I've been always trying to do is to find ways where um, you know the you lost me again. Can you hear you're me? Back. We, we're you're back. back. Yeah. Okay, I'm trying to reconstruct different periods of this town's population. So you know whether it be in the 18th century or the 17th century or the 19th century, I'm trying to reconstruct different periods of this town's population, and you know, using those genealogical sources and other ways to uh, to do that. 
I've listened to what obviously are some of the limitations of some of the strategies I've been employed. James, we think we lost you. James. And I, I haven't accepted that that's, that's the reality. Um, and I'm willing certainly always to I could always put can you uh, hear me at all? Hello? You're breaking up, James. Yeah, you're uh, can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll be quick. I'll be quick. I'm just saying that I'm always willing to make whatever modifications are necessary mm. Sorry. to, you know, improve. Can everybody hear? Hmm. Intermittent. Broken up badly, James. What's that? Well, what I'll do is I'll write it out in chat form, what I wanted to say. So even if you couldn't hear what I was trying to say in, in the uh, screen. You can yeah, just I hear think, what I'm saying. I think you were trying to say that you would make modifications of your work to benefit us all if it was necessary. Yes, absolutely. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yes. Hmm. You know, cool. it's, a, it's a learning process that I'm engaged in. And, you know, I recognize, as was spoken, I recognize the limitations of some of the strategies employed, but it is a learning process. And I can... You know, over time, as I'm trying to make those necessary changes, I think I can improve on what is being offered. Wow. Wow. James, you know, the bulk of your work is enormous. Um, it's hard. <laughs> I'm already amazed. Um, so if you'd even think that way is like really amazing. <laughs> yeah, if I may, James, I mean, I've looked at your work and, you know, we've met. What, what you've done is monumental. Well, you know, I think that um, you, you've told I us what we didn't even know we had is really what it is, and it's and it's a small step to actually go and look at the original documents because people didn't even know what was in them. So it's monumental. It's just that if if they're going to be a popular item, uh, you know, I, I mean, I think it is time for the next step. I mean, I think the same thing applies to you know we look at collections of articles by. Uh, Peter Moore, for example, you know, th those should be cataloged. The writings of Jane Kansas should be cataloged. I mean, I've started to do some of that, you know, so that they're in one place so that we all have this as a historical reference. Uh, the Terry Alphonse stuff sounds like, you know, that's been cataloged. Uh, so I think what you've done is told us what we didn't know. And I, I've used it a lot. I mean, I was even trying to count sheep and goats using it. Uh, so, so you're to be commended. And I think that it we don't have any standards for how we're presenting data. So we're all doing our own thing. I think that's all it is. Yeah, that sounds that sounds true. That sounds yeah. true. But I think that there's an initiative to consolidate and put our heads together because we realize how beneficial Everybody's it would be for all screen. of us. Yeah. Yes. This is the website I've been developing as uh, an alternative to the current uh, York Main. Oops. Um, also, I see Terry has posted his website for us to check out. And you know, so right away I see that link and I'm like, oh, we can incorporate that into YorkMainHistory.org. Uh, um, and yeah, so there's little things that we can do, but you know, a lot of people aren't even going to know about York History, YorkMainHistory.org. And, you know, who's, uh, so a lot of this stuff is just really obscure. And, but then when you discover it, it's like, it's huge. It's like, oh my gosh. Um, yeah. Anyways. Well, I mean, I, the thing I, about a website is you got if you drive traffic to it, and traffic begets traffic, uh, mm. and that's what it is. I mean, just like Terry has found it, he's used it. Other people are now going to use it, probably because of that very same reason. You know, success begets success, and I think that you know what we're doing currently isn't used that much, uh, 
So that's all there is to that. Hmm. Thank you. Everybody hear me all right? Yeah. 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 Um, we're going to try and keep this around an hour, an hour and five or 10 minutes. We've been on 50 minutes. Uh, to address more to Alan's topic, uh, you know, we started as a grassroots thing just to get people to put stuff out there, go into that closet, dig out a picture. And yes, we're in the infancy stage. We know we can take it further, but we're volunteers. We're, we're trying to build community. And that's what it was about at first. And it is. And Elaine's doing a great job saving it. Um, the first thing was to get people to pull the stuff out of their attics. And that's what we've been able to do. Um, case in point, the picture that Cheryl Wiggins showed up with of the corner up there in Kendall Road, and she had two pictures of two houses. That's now our opening picture. And the gal was in California that her great grandfather built that house. And somebody from York was able to give somebody a picture. Success right there, you know, that they they had that. And a painting from the girl's aunt or something like that. That's what we tried to achieve. We're trying to save this stuff and we want it we want to take it further. Uh, we're doing the best we can with, with what we have to work with. Um, I am going to talk about uh, a couple of things. Uh, other things is Katie Eaton. I we didn't hear from you tonight. Did you want to say anything? We see you're up there, Katie. Hello. I don't hear. Her. No. Um, I'm on muting her right now. Asking her to unmute. Just gonna... Hi, but... Oh, there we go. Hi. Hi, Katie. I, Let me I inter... can... can I introduce I... you just for a minute, Katie? Yeah, absolutely. I don't know how to show my my face on the screen. It's just my picture. No. <laughs> the gonna camera. Have video. I'll unmute the camera. James, are you laughing at me? I don't know how, no, not... I don't know how to do it. <laughs> no, so... I just... Katie. Katie is related to me. We found this all out, and uh, she has uh, got the the genie pox pill. Uh, the uh, <laughs> you know she's and she's taking it to the nth degree, and uh, very proud of her for what she's doing. And um, so it's good. But I like to see you here tonight. Go ahead, Thank Katie. You. What do you got to say? Yeah, I um, gosh, I don't. I kind of. Uh... I agree with Alan. You know, we spent a lot of time on the the walks on the weekends, and oh. I use his uh, resource all the time. Um, so it would be great to be able to have things more, you know, together. But I agree, everyone's doing a great job. You know, we kind of all have our things. So I look forward to the future where we can kind of come together. Um, but it's, I don't think I have anything. Oh, um, I did want to just make one note on a separate. We, um, I'm on the historic markers committee with James and we're still looking for I think it's two or three more people so we can officially start meeting and kind of move forward with that so forward with that so that would be kind of good to have a couple more maybe members step up and help with that so that's great yeah that great. but anyway thanks everybody appreciate it all thank you thank you yeah we we haven't heard from Tom Prince no Tom Prince and, Tom's a great contributor, and he's he put together some wonderful, uh, well, I'd call them stories, but of um, World War. And II. that's and that's what we've done is 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 create a venue for these for guys like Tom who do research. And Tom was saying, you know, I didn't know anybody was interested in my stuff, and everybody's interested when you get a place to put it out. And so the Tom. Prince stuff, the Peter Moore, the John Bardwell stuff, the Danny Patino, everything. We've given them a place to speak. So I'll let Tom speak. Um, I don't have too much to say. I, I, I certainly have added a lot of content over the last three or three and a half years. And I do like research and so I've just been pleased to be able to, whenever the mood strikes me, to do some research. I'll put
put it out there and uh, um, and I will try to continue to do so. And hopefully people read it and I think they do because I get a lot of comments on it and uh, I'll continue to do that and uh, take an active interest in this group and, and also in the town. So um, glad that everyone kind of has the same feeling that I do about town of York history. Thank you for I, that's all you about doing, Tom. Okay. For people who don't know, it, uh, Tom Prince is our resident authority on the Nubble. He lived out there his whole life and looked at the Nubble every day. And uh, we have questions. Or Tom is our, uh, our York Beach guy, and along with Peter Moore. So we rely on him for right. accuracy and things like that. Mm. So, wow. Anybody else? <laughs> Something. Kevin Freeman. Yes, I do want to say that uh, Peter Moore's contribution is undeniably amazing, immense, and uh, I have had the benefit to be digitizing uh, the contents of the box. I think it's the entire collection of his Unknown History of York and John Bardwell's Unknown History of York. And there are, uh, there are five binders, one being an index, which is an incomplete index, but um, I've gotten through, I think it's uh, 180 scans and I have enhanced them all so that I kind of cleaned them up, you know, took the scotch tape effect off them and made them so that they, you can just read them simply. And, um, and the, but there's four more binders. So, but they're not all unknown history of yours. Some of them are about meet your neighbors and stuff like that. And they're much bigger format. So, um, but it's taken me a long time. And then I really, you know, to, Alan's point. Um, so we have all of this. These things are invaluable. When I start reading them, when I start scanning them, I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't put them down. And then I go to the next binder and I jump ahead and I'm like, oh, if you go down a rabbit hole and they're all short and brief and but just so much full of York history and so invaluable to us all. So, um, you know, I'm hoping like as we move forward with this, like where we consolidate all this digital information, the unknown history of York's will be ready and can be uploaded to whoever server it is and available uh, for all of us. But if in the meantime, like if anybody would like to have access to them, um, I just have them like on a hard drive on a, I can put them on a thumb drive for individual people. And I could, as I, you know, scan every hundred or so I could, um, I could send them. They're about, each file is about, uh, I try to make them about one megabyte each. Um, so they're not enormous. Um, but anyway, ways there is that that I want to say. And then the last thing that I wanted to say was um, Ron Nell and I are working on a project of uh, uh, Black people in Maine um, during uh, the end of slavery and maybe the 17, up to the 1720s. And we have a list now. We've gone through uh, the vital records. We've gone through a lot of other resources as well. And uh, we've noted all of the slaves that were living in York and, um, you know, and in the vital records, a lot of times, I mean, not the vital records, the uh, probate records, um, they tell the value of the, the person. And, you know, there's a lot of information that we've gleaned out of there. So right now we're up to 30 um, people that were either enslaved or were here for nefarious reasons. And so if anybody would like to participate in that also, um, you know, you might think of different resources. Um, you can contribute to that. We have a spreadsheet right now that is on, that is, it's available. Anybody can look at it. Um, and I could probably put that link right down here and share that with us. So that's all mm -hmm. I have to say. Thank you. Kevin, I Thank would you. help you. I would help you scan. I'm a scanning nut and uh, I have an automatic sheet feeder and everything so anything i can do to help you scan uh, i'm happy to do it thank you wow. thank you for that okay um, thanks i'm going to talk about a couple of things that are going on that uh, we're involved with um deborah myers called me uh, she's the head of the senior advisory council and she uh, wanted to pay for an ad on york history group and doesn't even understand, you know, a lot of people don't understand. We don't, there's no money here. We don't pass <laughs> it. And so uh, she is tasked, they are tasked with finding applicants for the Boston Post Cane. If you know anything about it, about three years ago, Kevin and I spearheaded getting that tradition back mm. going for the town. 
Uh, Dan Dinell held it for a couple of years. It was great. He, we, we gave, gave it to him at 103, last 105 in a couple of months. Um, so we're going to be talking about that a lot. Uh, I'm going to try and keep that towards the top of the page. And I have a pseudo list of nine people that I have found that have held the cane since York has had it. Every week, I'm going to put one person up hmm. and uh, talk a little bit about them. But like I, the one I have up now is Warren Robbins, who was a Cape Netic guy, and he was married to Grace Philbrick, who was a Philbrick from the harbor. Uh, so somebody's got to have a picture of Warren. Um, there's some others down the road, so I'm going to do something. You know, I'd like to see that we know we must have relatives of Warren Robbins that it would have something like that. Um, December 11th, the Rees Across America are coming to York. They're going down to the uh, gymnasium. There's 1,100 Rees alone coming to York for the cemeteries. There's going to be uh, some sort of a program, full aut auditorium program on December 11th. They are looking for World War II veterans to recognize. Gosh, this guy's got to be up there. Guys and girls that are got to be a minimum 95, be six years old who have seen service in WW2. So good luck with that. We're hoping for them. And I want to talk about that. Um, if anybody remembers the show that we did with Todd Frederick, the chairman of the select board who is the super, uh, superintendent of First Paris Cemetery, on the finding of the map, the very old map that details the 88 uh, persons that they knew were there, but they never knew who they were. We're trying to put together a GoFundMe. They want to make a nice uh, granite plaque monument with the names and a little more history and, and all that. It's a big project. It's probably going to be $10,000, but. Um, the only ones they have to look to are the families and loved ones or people who uh, are interested in. Uh, so now there's there was case in essence is that it was an 88 unmarked graves. They knew were there and a local townsperson found the map and their things and brought it in and said to Todd Frederick, does this mean anything to you? And he was like, whoa, wait a minute. Yeah, yeah, yeah that tells me. So we're trying to trying to memorialize them. A lot of them were people from the town farm uh, that had no headstone. I have a particular interest in it, so I will be donating for that. Um, and the last thing I'd really like to talk about is that Kevin and I and James and a couple other people are involved. We are tasked with a couple of displays that are gonna happen in the new town hall. We've had a couple of, uh, uh, tours of what's going on there, the findings, great thing. And, but they're going to have a historical display in the new town hall. A uh, couple of big walls. Um, one's going to be may possibly a mural. We don't know. One's going to be filled with objects of our past. We, are, we will at some point probably have to turn to the public and see if somebody has a cider press or a you know, something for the, a family memento that uh, it would be a vision. It's going to be a visual display, quick, easy stuff that it's something. And it would be a loan to the town. Uh, we're talking about rotating display every year, year and a half, something like that. But um, the town owns a number of objects now. Um, and we the town, uh, we're, we're looking to, to um, save things better for town property and town things like that. So we are, uh, we're gonna be active with that and looking to the public that anybody wants to help. Um, again, we thank everybody that's been here this evening. If anybody has last minute stuff, we, uh, we like Kevin Freeman's gonna speak up. And again, to address Alan, doing a great job, very organized. We are trying to get more organized, but we're grassroots, Facebook, we save, we do, we this, and just getting people to drag stuff out of their 
cardboard boxes is, has been great. So maybe Kevin Freeman has something to say. Oh, Laurel, I guess, is one to. You want to turn Laurel on, Kevin? Uh, is she on? And I do have a com I do have a comment after Laurel. I just wanted to ask, I was doing, when I was doing the story on the blacksmith, I went to the old part of the first parish cemetery, and there are a lot of stones in there that are in disrepair, like they're laying down or they're really in bad shape. Like who pays for that kind of thing? Because it seems like we're kind of losing them. They're sort of a lot first of them. Parish, first parish does do a lot. I mean, the cemetery does do a lot. Uh, and they put their guys out there when they're not mowing, cleaning stones, and and they try and do as much as they can. But they have a pretty good workload and a limited budget, and they get no donations. Um, right. Terry um, Todd told me that you know if one of these wealthy old dudes would leave us some money every now and then, it would help. You know, they got a limited budget. Right. And, yeah. Uh, and yeah. so some they try and do what they act can. And, and, uh... I was just surprised they were laying on the ground, like, you know, and and the cracks, obviously, that that's a different story. I'm sure that's very expensive to repair. And yeah, I mean, they try and do, we, they know, we know, and mm. everybody's trying to do what they can on that. And uh, and that's going to be my, <laughs> my great reward. I'm going to be in that neighborhood. So uh, <laughs> I hope they spruce it up, you know. Yeah, Laura, well, let me have the boxes in your basement before you go. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Alan. All right, Laurel, you could um address Todd with that question, okay. he's very approachable. Um, so we do have we are broadcasting live on Facebook for those of you who don't know, and we do have a comment from Patricia Lacuro Tolo Hymanson who said, Thank you for collecting this York history, especially James. We have lived near Zach's farm for almost 40 years. It is only this year I learned about the Scottish indentured, indentured servants. Answer so many questions for us, exclamation mark. Wow, good, thank you. Yeah. Okay, I, are we wrapping it up, Kev? Well, I don't know, Lane, you got anything else to say? We'd love to hear from you. And Edward McCall down there, we see you. Um, you haven't you haven't said anything. Would you like to say anything? Hi, Edward. I think I'm asking him to unmute. Wait, you're not unmuted yet. There, you there go. we go. Uh, we're new, uh, and we became connected or uh, interested in York by the the no name of Tulpy. My oh, wife is a Tulpy, so. We're tracking the Tulpies from Jackman all the way back to Bangor, Augusta, and Cape Natick. So we've heard a lot of interesting projects going on in Cape Natick as well as in York. And we'd like to follow up on that. And I was happy to hear that there are a lot of resources uh, for that area. So we're just hoping that we can find a way to tap into that and follow up further with the uh, Tulpy family. So uh, I did enjoy this conference tonight very much. And well, you're think, in the right place, Edward. There's a lot of Tulpies that are that are um, members here and, and uh, leading members that uh, do a lot with it, with the family. That's awesome. We, uh, my wife had the opportunity of meeting uh, Dexter Spiller, Oh, yeah. He says he was a very interesting man, and we were actually hoping to meet up with him this summer, but we both got, it, we were ill and not able to travel, and unfortunately he had passed since, but we understand he was an awesome individual. His grandfather was Octavius Telby. It was, um, yeah. Yes. But Faith Webster is a member here, and, and they're Telpies, and so... There's a lot awesome. of them here. Yeah. We joined this year. So like I say, we're new. We're trying to learn as much as we can about York history. Hmm? No. Thank you. We, we we have another message from Facebook, um, which I think I should read. It's from Faith. Nate Lozier, who's one of our Faith? moderators. My wife says she knows Faith Webster. Faith Webster? Does that yeah, name sound her. familiar? Yes. Yeah, that's her. 
Yes, my wife's familiar with. She should get in touch with Faith. She's way over there in the shadows, so I don't know if you okay, can Okay, she's oh, hiding. No. She likes to hide. <laughs> likes to listen, but she likes to hide. <laughs> Kevin? Yeah, so I was saying that we have a, another message from Facebook from Nate Lozier, who is one of our moderators, and he wrote, I missed the link to participate in the Zoom, but thanks, everyone, for all you do for this group. Like Kevin and McKinney said, we're all volunteers with different specialties working very hard. So somehow Nate missed the link. I apologize, but I, I know I sent him a link, but uh, maybe, I don't know. Uh, I know we're gonna end momentarily. I just, I, I had invited Tammy uh, King Colburn um, and she didn't, she didn't come, but that's okay. Anyway, she did a great job redoing a cemetery and we have what, 200 of them in town, something like that. 200 private cemeteries mm -hmm. and a lot of them were in disrepair and not just the first parish um, but we can all, uh, only do so much if anybody had, had ever started a team of repair people to do cemeteries yeah but uh, so we appreciate the interest and we're just a group of volunteers trying to keep it moving forward <laughs> Kevin yeah, you just wrapped it up. Uh, I'm just going to ask Carol Hutchins. I just unmuted her. She hasn't contributed either. I wonder if she wants to say anything. No, I've like, really enjoyed. Oh, I've really enjoyed your meeting. It's wonderful to be able to zoom it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for showing up, Carol. Will you tell us a little bit about yourself? You're, you're an Elliot girl. Sure. Well, I am an Elliot. I'm presently living in Portland, Maine. But do you remember the Arrows Restaurant that was in Cape Natick? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah that was my grand. That was my grandparents' home. Oh, wow! So I, what I grew up name? there. H Hutchins. Oh, Sh so Shirley, you're... Emma Shirley Hutchins was a school teacher. Oh, so you'd be be related to Faith Webster too. Hutch Hutchins. A name does not ring a bell. But, um. Shirley Hutchins had 10 children. My father was the ninth of the 10 children. And he, he lived in Elliott. Oh, Kevin That's Freeman, I just, wasn't your family from up near there too? Where? Clay Hill Farm, is that Clay Hill Farm area somewhere? I would say yeah, so, I mean, yes. Yeah, but but the, yeah, so Hutchins, but she's up on uh, Borough Road. Oh, correct, yeah. correct, yeah. correct, so, correct. So you, you might have, did you go to school in Algonquin? Um, Elliot, Elliot, but oh. I inherited a lot of family pictures when the house in Kittery Point um, sold. It belonged to one of my aunts. In the attic, they discovered a piece of luggage which my grandmother had saved over the years of family pictures, and I was blessed to inherit it. Are they York people? Yes, and I've sort of disseminated some of it, went to South Berwick Historical Society, one went to Kittery Historical Society. Apparently, my grandfather worked on the Navy Yard, which I wasn't aware of, in the 1930s. Hmm. If they're York people, we'd love to see them up, up on the page. Wonderful. Thank you. I have contributed some things. Particularly, wait, did your group put out pictures of the teachers in the town? We yeah. try. All right. because My grandmother's in several of the pictures because she taught oh. all eight grades. Oh, it might have been the, the Brixham School. Yes. Okay. okay. Great. Right. Yeah. Well, thank thank you. you. Somebody else? Did I see your hand go up? That wasn't you, Danny. Okay. All right. I think it's. I think it's a wrap. Is it a wrap? We're done. Thank you to everybody that participated. See everybody. Right. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs> and I'm gonna. I'm just gonna log off. Uh, Facebook right now and we're on Facebook. So thank you everybody and uh, thank you. Thank Good you. to see everybody. Good. Good. Happy Halloween. 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 Happy Halloween.